Hi, I'm Tim. Join me as I go over the design, build, and test flight of the foam bug over a three-day period. Let's get to it. The engine for the foam bug is a E-Flight Park 370 electric motor. They use a two-cell LiPo battery. Um, it's plenty of power for the initial hand launch and climb out. And because of just the light weight, the plane weighs one, point, uh, one pound, one ounce, I can literally fly it on a third throttle to maintain level flight. And again, just full control, uh, the ailerons, the uh, full span ailerons give it very accurate band control. The elevator is just the right amount. It's just a very comfortable, smooth flying airplane. The basic building material of the foam bug is display foam board. I got mine on Amazon. Details of the exact product is in the description for the YouTube video. It's about 3 16ths of an inch thick and it's 30 inches long. And what you'll find is a lot of people use this to build their um, foam RC airplanes. It's a good material to work with. Oftentimes you'll see a wingspan of 30 inches because that's the length of the foam. Uh, what I did with my model is I built two halves 20 inches long and connected them with a, dihed with a dihedral brace and I'll show that uh, later on in this video. But this is the building uh, material that I used. The foam looks like this and what happens is on both sides there's a paper covering. The paper covering comes off fairly easily. You can just peel it off and then this is foam that is a good surface to glue to. The glue that I use for this model, just about the entire uh, model, is hot glue. The hot glue goes on and you put the two pieces of foam together, it dries within 20 to 30 seconds, it's an extremely strong lightweight bond. bond. I've also used Gorilla Glue and if you want 500 epoxy it will work well with your foam as well. To build the wing, I use the arm and wing technique from Experimental Airlines. The link to Experimental Airlines is on my YouTube uh, channel page. But I took some uh, very good ideas on the Experimental Airlines and modified them somewhat. This is a cross section of the wing. And what happens is the foam board is just scored at the front leading edge, folded over. The spar are two one inch foam pieces glued together and glued to the bottom and top of the wing. This provides a surprisingly strong brace for the wing. The foam itself is fairly strong. The spars glued to the top and bottom do a wonderful job. You sand the back of the foam uh, at an angle, uh, bevel it, you glue this in place, and this is a very close approximation to a Clark Y airfoil. Again, I'll show you, I'll actually demonstrate building this on the build of the second um, uh, foam bug, but this is what is in the wing, and, and there's no balsa, it's strong, lightweight, and you do have a pretty good airfoil section. You can fly a foam airplane with just the raw foam. The problem is it'll ding pretty easily. Uh, the foam with the um, foam board, it, it, it's not going to take a lot of hanger rash, so it's beneficial to cover it with something. You'll see on YouTube that there's a lot of examples of models will use uh, a packing tape. Uh, this packing tape comes in a variety of colors. It's very thin, it's very lightweight. You've got to be careful putting it on because it, you can't pull it off once it's on any wrinkles. You'll find that most models will install it before they build the wing. I did add tape to this model afterwards, more for a decorative effect and just to see what it's like. You can see it's just hard unless you have a very smooth flat surface to get it on, get it on well. So tape can be used in certain cases. Again, on the, the second version, I plan on using transparent monocoat. We'll see how that works. I think that'll work out okay. The red is also uh, tape. It's not um, packing tape, but rather electrical tape. Again, a little bit easier to apply, perhaps a little bit heavier. Two other materials that were very, very helpful in this build of the uh, plane that I've not seen on other YouTube sites is drywall reinforcing uh, mesh tape here. I got this at Home Depot. It's a little bit of a sticky tape. When you put it on, it holds on its own, so it, it holds in place well. And once the foam is, uh, excuse me, the drywall tape is on the foam, you can put hot glue or Gorilla Glue. It's a very lightweight, effective reinforcing material to the foam itself. 
What I did on the model is I used the foam along the entire length of the fuselage just to add strength. You can see it's covered with a covering here, but here's the tape along here. I put the um, reinforcement on the dowels going through the foam for the wing hold down dowels. I even put a little uh, section of the tape along the firewall just to help hold everything in place. In addition, on the wing, I used this drywall tape for the reinforcing the center section where I had to butt join for the dihedral. Also, I extended a little bit on the side so the rubber bands go over, it won't chew into the foam. And also, I added the tape along the bottom of the fuselage, again for strength. Note also the channel here that I cut for the dihedral brace. I used popsicle sticks, just placed in here, hot glued, overlapped in the middle, butted up against the foam spar. This is a very effective and strong dihedral brace for the center of the wing combined with the tape uh, located, as you can see. Let's take a look at the uh, fuselage and some of the building techniques I've used. Again, this will be incorporated on a future video for the second version um, of the foam bug. I had a basic um, fuselage section of three layers of foam. There's a middle one and two outer layers, so that's three layers of foam. That seemed about right for the strength, again with the foam packing tape to provide a greater a, a rigidness to it. I needed some sort of shoulder for the wing mounting, so I added one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so three on each side of the foam just to have something to mount the wing on, and that worked well in addition to providing a basis for the wing hold down dowels. A popsicle stick cutout is the incident for the leading edge of the wing, as well as dowels on this side of the fuselage for rubber band to go around to hold the battery in place uh, here. I added some side pieces to build up the nose section to have a mount for the engine. I used 1 16th ply for the engine mount that is nowhere near enough. I'll use at least 1 8th inch on um, updated versions. And these are fairly long screws held in place with washers sufficient to add just a little bit of down thrust and a little bit of right thrust, which is pretty standard for these types of models. Note also to keep this plywood um, firewall in place, Behind the engine, I drilled four holes. I put in quarter inch dowels. The dowels are sunk in about this far with hot glue. That's another method to hold the engine in place and that worked out well on our test flights. The components are obviously outside. I use double-sided um, adhesive tape to mount all the components uh, with holes to go through for the various ailerons. Same for the servos on each side. The guides for the push rods for the elevator and rudder, these are popsicle sticks with a hole drilled in them and just mounted with hot glue into the foam fuselage. Again, on this side with some reinforced drywall tape to make sure they stay in place. It's crucial they stay in place for flexing. A little bit of a side mount to make sure the rudder and fin are in place. Uh, some doubling up for the control horns. Again, the control horns are Popsicle 6 purchased off Amazon. And on the bottom, I just added a little bit of a spar for the stabilizer. Future versions, I will definitely use a popsicle stick to make sure that's a little bit stronger, maybe a couple of them. And the elevator, or the stabilizer, just needs to be a little bit bigger looking at it. And that's, that will be in the subsequent version. The dimension of the foam board is 30 inches long. The wing is 40 inches. There are some people that will have a 30 inch wing. I, I just need a little bit bigger wing, so I made two 30 inch wing halves cut off the ends and made them in the middle for the um, dihedral brace. Fuselage is exactly 30 inches long, which is the length of the foam board. That just worked out perfectly, and that is what I use for the length of the fuselage.
So we just had our first flight of the foam bug and I couldn't be any happier. It just it literally flew off the boards. So we did a hand launch obviously with no landing gear. Uh, just handled well. There was just a little bit of left trend that was needed that I added on the second flight. The motor held on, weight and balance was fine, control, it, everything, it just handled very well. And I was flying it at well less than half a throttle. It was just on maintaining altitude, just a, a smooth, happy flyer. So a uh, very successful day here and look forward to making some improvements and we'll come back with a foam bug too. So we've just come back to the flying field. The plane flew better than as, as good as I could expect. It just handled well, smooth on the controls, light weight, plenty of power response. Again, I'll be doing updated videos with plans and further instructions on the um, foam bug with some improved building techniques. I think it'll make it look a little bit better and a little bit more uh, rugged for use at the field. So thank you for joining me in this video and look forward to seeing you on future YouTube videos.